All right, y'all, you listen to WWOZ 90.7 FM on your radio dial. And as, as mentioned before, we began our set with uh, Kenny Burrell doing Downstairs. We heard from uh, Dr. John with Lou Reed doing Perfect Day. Um, we also heard music from John Lennon with Starting Over and The Birds with uh, Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man and Romeo's tune with Steve Forbert. Um, the uh, the birds being one of the pivotal songs in the early part of Steve Warbert's career, one of his first to- songs that kind of turned him on in music, and we are so fortunate to have him here. He's playing at uh, Chicky Wawa tomorrow night, but right now I have him right here in the studio with me. Steve, welcome to WWOZ. Welcome to New Orleans. I know you're from Meridian, Mississippi, about four and a half hours from here, so welcome back home. Well, thank you, Michael. Glad to be here. And I caught you before you made the big move, so I'm catching the end of an era here. You sure are. You sure are. Uh, this, this station, is, um, this particular building has done us well since Katrina, but it's time to move on down the road. And uh, we're on the second floor here. We're going to be on the third floor there, so moving on up, as they say in the Jeffersons. <laughs> Happy to be doing that. And I'm glad you're here to uh, kind of kind of get us into the next phase and maybe say, say goodbye to this beautiful space. And, um, well, great. You're, you're on a, a tour and you're back here in New Orleans. And, uh, that tune we just heard was something that many of us grew up with a really beautiful tune called Romeo's tune. Um, I know that that was recorded. Uh, you had been, you left Mississippi to move to New York to get a taste of what that was like. I guess anybody from the South, it really wants to make it big, kind of needs to go up there. And we, we all of our people have done that. Aaron Neville, uh, uh, Dr. John, Harry Connick Jr. So it just makes sense that a Southern boy would wind their way up to the Big Apple to, to make a go of it. Yeah, and I was uh, playing a, acoustic guitar. I'd been in a lot of rock and roll bands when I was in my teens. But when I got 21 and uh, did a couple of years of junior college... And I, uh, I, I just decided the time was right. And I thought if things got really bad in New York City, it, the, the word was that you could sing on the street. And I, I always felt like I should never stop playing, never, you know, never let any grass grow under my feet or whatever you'd say. Right. So I went to, to what, see what was left of the folk scene in Greenwich Village. And I, I did wind up doing a lot of street singing. And then after going through all of those uh, opportunities and the, what was the, remained of the folk scene, I, I went into CBGB's one day and I thought, I, I dared myself to audition there with an acoustic guitar. And I got lucky because the sound man, Charlie Martin, was there. And he was a very receptive, nice cat. And he did all the sound for all the shows there for forever whoever it was and 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 i wound up opening for talking heads when they were a trio and um and let's see i opened once when john kale brought a very loud intense band in there for three nights stand. wow so yeah, that's, that's, that, that's what was happening it's like the crossroads of, of all those different sounds you have the you know dave van ronk yeah those kind of guys were still going strong and then you like you said the emergence of the very specific uh, CBGB scene and the punk scene and all the different things from uh, a new wave happening because you got there kind of the tail end of the 70s, right? I got there in the summer of 76. And uh, yeah, Dave Dave Van Ronk was still playing. He, he, he was mainly playing at a place which which was back to being called the Bitter End. Right. But I'm wrong. For At that time, it was called the Other End. Mm. And and Dave played there, and Tim Harden played there, and and there were there were remnants, there were people still at it that I could, that I admired, and I could check them out. So there was a lot going on. That's great. That's great. Um, well, tell us about that particular song and that the style you kind of develop because um, it's just a really iconic sound. And uh, I guess later on, it would there was different um, elements that would come of these kind of singer songwriter types, but it was a different era. And uh, you forged ahead, and one of the first ones to kind of break out from that. 
Well, Michael, you could say I was at the very end or the very beginning of something. <laughs> <clears throat> it was kind of the maybe the very beginning of what do we call this kind of music because it, it wasn't particularly popular anymore, not radio-wise, and the, the new wave thing and the, the explosion from England with all of those groups like, uh, I, I don't know, Bow Wow Wow and Thompson Twins, you name it. Right. Uh, madness, the list was endless. But um, So it was what to call this. Now they call it Americana. Right. But at the time, it was just, to me, it was just what I still, that's what I felt. And uh, I can see really that what the the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald was, <laughs> might, might have been what ended the so called singer songwriter hits on the radio. And then it seemed like a while before Tracy Chapman had that great record with Fast Car. Right. Um, so I was just making a go of it in, in, in that time period. After, after it was really the singer-songwriter thing really was over. But I was young and I had a lot of energy and I didn't care. <laughs> you know, why, why worry? I'd, I'd managed to have a record contract and I was making some albums. Right, and you've continued on. You've made at least 20 records, right? About yeah. 20 at this point? It may be 21 and I'm working on another one. Uh, as When I get back to New Jersey, we'll, we'll finish it. That's awesome. Um, well, again, you're playing at Chicky Wawa tomorrow night, and we're all happy about that because it's such a, a beautiful sounding room. And um, welcome back to WWOZ. Good to have you here. Oh, terrific. Thanks for having me in. And um, just played uh, Baton Rouge last night, and it's good to have a, a chance to talk about the show tomorrow and try to get some people to come out. This is the last date of the five day tour. Okay. And what's the, uh, the musical configuration going to be tomorrow night? What can we expect to hear from you? Uh, I'm joined by a really fine keyboard player whose name is Rob Clores. He's going to play two or three on accordion, too, uh, also. Uh, but that just fleshes it out really good for me. And uh, I, I, I played solo for years there, um, all through, I don't know, it seems like a lot of through the alts and the teens. And I just, I finally just, uh, I got tired of playing just solo, and it, one person can make a really big difference. I, I have a band in New Jersey, too, but I can't travel with a full band. It's just too expensive. Yeah, I gotcha. Well, I, t I think you're going to be very uh, uh, comfortable in the room that's, that's going to be playing that tomorrow night because it, it has a very intimate feel. It, um, they've done some uh, renovations to make it, uh, make the staging a little more intimate. So I think you're going to really enjoy the, uh, the acoustics, and also just the feel of the room. It's a very receptive, uh, what we call a listening room. Yeah. So it's nice. Well, you probably know of the Red Dragon listening room up in Baton Rouge. I haven't uh, been to the Red, Red Dragon recently, so I, I'm not sure what it's like, like like these days. How was it for you last night? It's great. I played there four times now. All right. And and it's it's always fun, and the, the the guy that runs it is is all about all about all about the music. So it's a listening room. So yeah, tomorrow night should be more of the same. That's awesome. Well, um, tell us about this uh, recent recording project. This that you, we're going to play a song from this. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, which one are you going to play something from? The streets play, of this town, yes, or uh, yes. okay, we're going to play that one. That is. An original record, Streets of This Town, came out in tw tw um, 1988. And Gary Talent of the E Street Band produced it. Uh, I had not had a record contract for a few years, which I, I won't go into that now. But anyway, Gary helped us get back in the studio, and he helped me get a new record contract. And... Uh, that record was recorded with my touring band, which we call the Rough Squirrels. And then here, not long ago, I decided that I'd like to kind of clean that record up a little bit, maybe take a little bit of the keys off of it, make it more quote-unquote Americana. Okay. I've, I've always liked the overall statement of the record. Uh, there was a lot of heart and soul in it, I felt like, and, and I wanted to present it again. So we didn't just remaster it. A friend of mine named Steve Puntalillo in New Jersey, he remixed the whole damn thing from scratch. And uh, Blue Rose Music, who put out my recent records, 
they release the thing, and we've got it out on vinyl and CD, and it's called uh, Streets of This Town Revisited. It's just a chance for me to re- re- present these songs again and and maybe just get people to re- con- you know, re- revisit the album. Right, right. Well, that's awesome. We'll be able to taste of that tomorrow night, I, I hope. Oh, yeah. And uh, again, Steve, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, come visit us here at WWOZ, talk about your your uh, new and older music uh, of your amazing uh, career that spans four decades. Uh, I was talking to Murph, how we grew up listening to your music, and it's so nice to have you here and to see you continue on with your voice still in great shape and your, your songwriting still at the highest level all, all throughout your career. It's pretty cool because we're... Because you said we did over 20 records at this point, and pretty much you can drop the needle on any one of those records and find some great music all throughout your career, which is pretty amazing. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate all of that. And I, I'm working on another one, so I hope that uh, in your new location you'll be receiving uh, maybe number 21, or it might be 22 before the year's over. That's awesome. Or next year. Love it. Well, we'll look forward to having you... Uh, put the record out, playing it, and then hopefully having you back as a as a guest and back into New Orleans to play one more time. And uh, again, tomorrow night, Chicky Wawa is the place to see Steve Forbert right here at WWOZ. And thank you so much for joining us and sharing the stories with us about your music and give us a little taste of what we're going to hear tomorrow night. Fantastic. All right. Again, you're listening to WWOZ, 90.7 FM. This is the Kitchen Sink Show with your host, Michael Dominici.